The Velvet Revolution, also known as the Gentle Revolution, was a nonviolent movement that took place in Czechoslovakia from November 17th to December 29th, 1989. After World War II, Czechoslovakia came under the control of the Communist Party, which operated in close relationship with Communist leaders in the Soviet Union. The revolution included mainly student demonstrators that were protesting against their one-party government of the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia. One article described the students as followed. They were fed up with the Marxist-Leninist ideology being forced upon them at the university, and they were fed up with the government's seeming indifference to the deteriorating plight of their society. In the end, the protesters eventually saw the collapse of the Communist Party and transition from socialism to a parliamentary republic, which is a system that has no clear-cut powers between the executive and legislative branches. The Communist Party of Czechoslovakia first started on February 25, 1948, and at that time there were no parties that opposed the government rules. Although there were many dissidents that participated in Samizdat, which is a form of dissident activities. The first protest against their communist government occurred in 1988 and was called the Candle Demonstration, which was organized by Roman Catholic dissidents that were pleading for religious freedom in Czechoslovakia. In total, there were 5,000 Czechs that protested with candles in their hands. It was the first important step for the people of Czechoslovakia to fight against their communist regime. In response, police used violent actions such as water cannons and used force with their batons and sticks. But these acts of aggression quickly diminished because they faced persecution by the secret police. Books and films could be banned if it went against the ideas of their country's regime. The denying and access of books was not just the only thing that the Communist Party did not like. They also opposed things such as being a child of an entrepreneur or a non-communist politician. Not to mention, disagreeing with Soviet military occupation and promoting a religion could get you into trouble. But after 30 years of the Communist Party ruling, the Czechoslovakian citizens were discontent with the standard of living and economic inadequacy that eventually led to a push for an economic reform. Czechs and Slovaks then started to challenge their government more openly and freely. There are many important figures and common workers that signed petitions in support of Václav Havel during his imprisonment in 1989. Havel was a Czech poet, playwright, dissident, and politician who later became the ninth and last president of Czechoslovakia as he was unanimously chosen. One of his key contributions to bringing down the Communist Party was providing an on-air narrative via Radio Free, which was a Czechoslovakian radio station. Following that, he was banned from the theater and then became more politically active. His political contributions to the Velvet Revolution ended up with multiple trips to prison in constant government surveillance and questioning from the police. He had a target on his back, but was loved and admired by all the people. He once said, I really do inhibit a system in which words are capable of shaking the entire structure of government, where words can prove mightier than ten military divisions. It was this belief that gave the Velvet Revolution momentum. By voicing your opinion and incorporating nonviolent movements, your actions could prove to be mightier than 10 military divisions. There was more than just one force that urged the Czechs to speak out and act against their government. The fall of communism in Poland and Hungary were events that motivated the citizens of Czechoslovakia. Once Hungary ended communism, it opened up their borders with East Germany that led many Germans to migrate to West Germany from Austria. Those events then led to the fall of the communist regime in Germany as well, ultimately bringing down the Berlin Wall. These events were said to spark the inspiration to start the Velvet Revolution.
Natasha Dodinsky was quoted in an interview stating, The power of the crowd can be very dangerous. In this nonviolent movement particularly, the Czech students were extremely thrilled with the fall of the Berlin Wall and the fall of the Communist Party. All this was made to happen by the nonviolent protesting students and the willingness to forego abuse and scrutiny from the government. Natasha also stated that when the students heard such free speeches from Vaclav Havel, it was liberating. It influenced them to the point that nothing else mattered but getting the job done, Influence, influencing the government's position all with being nonviolent. Mahatma Gandhi, the said founder and most influential person when it came to nonviolent protests, was quoted numerous times on nonviolence being the most viable option for protesting. He said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, and I cannot teach you violence as I do not myself believe in it. I can only teach you not to bow your heads before anyone, even at the cost of your life. He believed that nonviolence was not just a way of protesting, but the only way of protesting. Nonviolence protests have proven numerous times that it is not only more rewarding and successful, but more humane as well. The Tiananmen Square student protests in Beijing salt tax protests with Ghani himself, and racial segregation and discrimination sit-in protests in America all proved to have been the viable option for protesting. The nonviolence movements all have the same goal, changing an unjust society into a just one. The values are the same. Stay nonviolent, don't get, give in to being abusive, band together, and hope. Gandhi demonstrated this the best way it could have been demonstrated. Not only did he bring different cultures and people together, he led the people to put their lives on the line only to influence the government to the point of changing to fit the wants and needs of the people. Hindus and Muslims band together, got over differences, and fought for the same cause. They were willing to sit in the streets and set themselves on fire just to gain political attention. The blacks during the sit-ins were willing to take the beating, spitting, kick, and kicking to get a point across, that they were going to continue to be humane and nonviolent if it meant hope for change. I have a dream. One of the most famous quotes Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, he believed blacks and whites could get along and live together in society without any discrimination and prejudice. The goals across the boards are the same. Justification. The goal of turning a society that's said to be unjust and changing it to be just and right. In India, this was according to what the people wanted, and in America, to what the Constitution said was right. The values of bringing people together to fight for the same cause being humane and maintaining peace even with barbaric behavior being put upon them are all the viable option in these situations. Why stoop down to the level of being violent when you're protesting violence? Why give the oppressor even more of a reason to beat and kill you for your protest? Triumph has always and will always be superior when the underdog wins. Gandhi states, I object to violence because when it appears to do good, the good is only temporary, the evil it does is permanent. The victory of the revolution ended with the election of the rebel playwright and human rights activist Vaclav Havel as the president of the republic. Free elections held in June of 1990 legitimized the new government, but remnants of the old government still existed and some problems still persisted. The new government didn't have to deal with popular values and expectations, but also accumulated social and environmental problems that resulted from the Communist Party being in place for more than 40 years. The success of the change relied on and still relies on how developments outside the country help or hinder the process.